Good morning, race fans. Welcome to round 12 of the Monster Energy Supercross, and you're watching the virtual track walk presented by Dunlop Motorcycle Tires. And we are going to be talking about the track. I got my good friend Brock Glover with me. How are you doing, Brock? Very good this morning. Can't wait. To, can't believe we're round 12 already of this series. It's uh, just flying by. I know. It is crazy. And this is our last covered stadium for the rest of the series, if you can believe that. Yeah, it's uh, it says you know we're gonna leave the Taj Mahal and go back out into the real elements when we hit the Atlanta at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. Yes, you know um, Atlanta is gonna be one heck of a Supercross track in the middle of the speedway, but tonight we are here at AT and T Stadium in Arlington, Texas, and we have some amazing dirt and we had some amazing racing last week in the 250 class. You know it was a little stagnant in the 450 class just because. You know, they didn't, we're jockeying back and forth position, but, um, you know, it was a good racetrack last week and we have a great racetrack here today and the dirt works crew did a, a lot of work, a whole brand new build for this week. I don't think there's only a couple corners that left, but as you can see, we're coming around the start corner into this long rhythm section right by the Yamaha tough blocks. Well, speaking of that start there, Tyler, it looked like maybe it came up a little quicker than before. Did they, did they, they it's like they shortened that start a little bit. Yeah, so the short, the start is gonna be about 20 feet shorter than last week. They had to move it up just a little bit just to get a little bit more room towards the back end of it for the podium. But yeah, the start is gonna be about 20 feet shorter, but plenty of speed coming down in that first corner and we're coming into this first rhythm section. And I couldn't figure out how to get through this when I was walking the track yesterday and a little bit today, but they might be able to triple on to the top of this tabletop and then double off, but that still sets you up with a three one. And, you know, when you're doing these rhythm sections, you want to do everything possible to not single out because that just, you know, prohibits all your momentum coming into that monster energy bowl corner. Yeah, it definitely upsets a bike. Plus you're jumping off of a single kind of into a bowl corner and you're really almost, you know, you know, you jump front end high and then you really turn the bike and get your braking. If you go front end low, you know, it's just, it just upsets the whole bike and, it, and it's really what they're trying to avoid. So it's going to be interesting what they do off that knuckle off that table back behind us there. And then what, you know, what kind of rhythm, I don't know if they can get two. And then like you mentioned three, but these guys do some crazy stuff and who knows what a, what a happened here. Yeah. So the corners are actually extra tight here at this round dirt works kind of did that on purpose just because there's not so many switchback lanes and short straightaways they wanted to slow down the track so the bowl corners are about you know two or three feet closer than they are usually and you'll notice what i'm talking about when we come up into this you know end of this rhythm section but this is going to be a tricky rhythm section too they could you know come out of the corner bounce and then come and land on this one right here and then jump off the face of this tabletop and land onto that far tabletop. But that's still gonna be, you know, a far huck for these guys. So I'm interested to see free practice and watch free practice um, just to see what these guys do. But just a little reminder, 2 p.m. Eastern time, race day live starts, 8 p.m. Eastern time, racing starts on Peacock and then another delayed um, broadcast on NBC Sports. And then for you guys overseas, Make sure you guys check out Video Pass for watching Supercross for your overseas um, fans over there. But, you know, everybody, we want you guys to watch Supercross because we have a championship battle on our hands. And I'm looking to Ken Roxon to, you know, kind of bounce back. Well, you mentioned the track. I mean, tightening up the track, uh, making the corners a little tighter, slowing the track down a little bit. It's always a real challenge, you know, if they open up the corners too much and they've got, uh, you know, a lot of fast sections, it gets, you know, down the lap times, get into the mid 40s, even maybe 43 range. And then they're doing almost 30 laps for the main event. So it is a challenge for the Dirt Works crew to, to make a track that's raceable and to tighten up the corners. But then that also the, makes more ruts and, and chews up the track more. So, you know, it's it, it's a challenge to do what they do and they, and they do a great job and they have to mix it up for 17 different rounds too. So here we come right into a big long set of roller whoops these are made by again the, this is the, the second round now the last uh, last race being the first round where they're made by a loader so these get really really tough yeah so these from tip to tip they're 13 feet apart um it definitely gets a little bit more trickier um 
for you know a lot of the time that you won't see these 13 foot tip to tips um jumpers because they're a little bit skinnier a little bit narrow in between the gap and it's harder for your bike to fit and the bottom v's are so sharp that you know it almost takes all the way until the main event where you can even you know be able to jump them without upsetting the bike so much but we're coming across the start straight right here into you know another one of those kind of curb 90 degree corners that we've seen really get rutted and the exit of it kind of got so chewed out they they had to go to that inside and you know you were talking about line selection and everything like that and unfortunately you know with these long rhythm sections i think it's going to end up being one line and one quick line through the whole entire rhythm section but um to open it up i think we got you know good separators like the whoops and we have a sand track or not a sand track a sand section coming up as well what's going to mix some things up and we always see some major mistakes in the sand section yes and that corner right behind you coming across that starting line that's a great passing opportunity to somebody to dive right down tight on a low apex there and try to get a block pass but once you do a block pass or you do something that's upset uh, the other rider you both lose your rhythm in this and the riders behind that can catch up so you got to be kind of offensive but also defensive as you come diving into a corner trying to make a pass there yeah, and then, you know, just to get you guys a little bit more in the rider head as well. So, like, we we're just, you know, we we're going through this rhythm section. We we're going through a three-footer, a five-footer. You know, we want to, when riders are looking at the track, when they're doing the track viewing, they want to be looking at how to not hit the highest obstacles because the highest obstacles are going to send you, you know, the highest and, you know, the farthest. So you want to stay low but still go far at the same time. So you guys want to the riders are going to be looking at which low ones they can hit and how far they can go and trying to stay away from like this five footer you see, because you don't want to hit this five footer and go into this corner because it's just going to take all your momentum away and it's going to be really hard to get back going. So you want to stay low and fast through those ridden sections, just, you know, a little inside scoop on what these riders are looking at. Um, but we're going into this fly racing triple right here probably one of the simplest obstacles on this track yeah this is tear off central there so good way to remember that right low is not slow so you want to stay on those rhythm sections as you hit this triple right here and, and the idea again is to scrub some speed get back on the ground and not launch as far as you can or as high as you can so that's where the old scrub came in yeah and then you know with the simple obstacles i think it opens a major opportunity on the track because it kind of opens up lines and riders can square up and then we're going to this beautiful dunlop bowl corner and this is right before that sand section too so look for a lot of passes to be made on this end of the track because it kind of opens up and just simplifies the whole entire track and you know when it's simple the riders like to push and kind of mix up different lines and you know, it's going to be interesting to see what, you know, where everything develops. But this sand section is going to be gnarly. They, there's some rollers or, or there are actually clay rollers underneath about a foot and a half of sand underneath here. So it's going to get rutted up. It's going to get gnarly. And they, you were talking about tear offs earlier. They're going to be ripping some tear offs through this section. Yeah, and it's coming out of that Dunlop bowl corner back there. If you've noticed, I mean, maybe you could see on the screen, but it's pretty darn tight. So having to slow down and get that tight of a corner, a little 180 like that, and then right into a sand section where you're trying to build up speed and you don't have a lot of drive in that loose sand, that's going to be, uh, you're going to see some squirrely lines and some action going in there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And then we're going up the WPS finish line. Um, another thing what I noticed when I was walking this track was how beefy this finish line landing was I was like dang that thing is you know they use some extra dirt on here and then you know we're going over the top of this landing and we're going to go right into that WPS double right there but this track you know is going to be I think it's going to be a good racetrack long rhythm sections they're going to end up doing the same thing but you know with you know, with everyone doing the same thing, I think it opens for, you know, some exciting racing because the only way you're going to be able to pass is through those corners and have to be aggressive. Don't you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Right here, you see this is kind of like a 120 corner. It's not really a 180, not really a 90, somewhere in between there. And, uh, you know, the, this leads out onto the starting line. And 
this, these kind of corners right here, when they lead out onto a flat starting line where they have a nice lot of acceleration, a lot of options as the track develops, maybe a blue groove starts to come in where it gets hard back. I really like those because it allows for some passing and people squaring them up, you know, the riders squaring each other up in the corner before. Coming into a right-hander also with your break on the inside, it's going to be a very interesting section. I think you're going to see a little bit of passing going in here and then with the immediate left following in the old first corner. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, just a little bit of information before we wrap things up, um, this base of the track, so this, you know, the top six inches of this base right here hasn't changed one bit throughout the whole entire week so you know i'm looking for this base to be a little bit harder and that's why it's kind of being a little bit more blue grooved and you know everything like that um tonight but make sure you guys check us out at round 13 in atlanta because we have an amazing track coming up but that is going to conclude our virtual track walk by dunlop motorcycle tires thank you guys for watching